there we go again, just showing you the picture of like the curve there. Now, if we move on to the next one, you can see again, talking about how uh, apes, gorillas, what have you, they have a little bit of a change by becoming a bit more upright, but you notice that they just have a little bit of a cervical curve to have the eyes on the horizon, but they didn't come all upright giving the need for a lumbar curve, okay? There's nice pictures of the shape of the spine showing the double S or the S shape and the pyramid idea from the back. Here we are with the double pyramids stacked on top of each other, the obelisk shape and then the sacrum of which for our purposes, I call part of the spine. But when we talk about pelvis next week, I'll call it part of the pelvis. <laughs> so it kind of just depends what part you want to talk about it. It's like the one that, you know, it's got two personalities. Which one do you want me to be part of? All right, now moving along. This is part of information, it's great if you know it, but it really doesn't overly matter that you can throw out the words. I think sometimes that's nice for students to hear the actual typical real medical words. I think that's nice. There's no reason they can't learn it. Okay, we've got our cervical vertebrae, then our thoracic, lumbar, and sacral, of which the coccyx is the same. So coccyx, people tend to say tailbone. That's up to you. Of course, some teenagers giggle at the word coccyx. So <laughs> say tailbone if you need to, that's all right. <laughs> now they are grouped and given their name for two reasons. One would be, you can see that they each have their full direction of curve. As soon as it's going in the other direction of curve, it's another section and another label. And that other section, other label also is because each type of section has its own shape to the bones. So like a vertebrae here, this is a lumbar vertebrae. And I know that because of the shape of it based on the type of movement that needs to be available at those spots versus looking at a, um, this one would be a, oops, tossing these things around. This one would be a cervical one because of the nature of how it's shaped. So we're gonna look at a little bit of the shapes, just a little bit. We get into that more when we're looking at the movement, however. So that would be the next time. Putting the curves together, um, when Travis has said about being like a wave or, here you, or being fluid, here you go. Taps right into our fluid nature if we think of it as a wave running through us. Okay, your primary curves are you being that curved thing in utero. Then when you are first born and you're on your tummy, you will start to do lifting head actions that help to develop the cervical curve. You didn't have it when you were first born. Then kicking your legs <laughs> and pushing around starts to develop the lumbar curve, okay? As well as, of course, pushing up on your arms, you're gonna get more of a lumbar curve. So in our development, in, within the first two years, we're getting those curves, but the curves are still, just so you know, are deeper as an adult than they are even as a child or teen. Those curves deepen a little bit over time as we continually develop. And just to sort of bug to put in your ear later when we're talking about feet, say in a foot one. Oh, there we go. There's the curves. Thanks about them completing later. Is this idea of primary and secondary curves? And to just draw attention, I think you can see my, oh, no, you can't see my cursor when I'm on the full one. But just have a look down at the arch of the foot and it's labeled as a secondary curve. So a lot of times challenges in the feet such as a flattening arch or a non-resilient arch can be linked to the other secondary curves or the whole curve chain really being disrupted. Okay, so hyperextended knees where I'm curving the other way will mess up into the feet, will confuse the spine, all that. All these curves work together. So I've started with spine, like in this series of stuff because it's the, the biggest one that if I change in there can make a huge change everywhere else. So if I'm trying to go around increasing my arches of my feet and get that resilience thing there, but I haven't addressed my spine, you're, not, you're only gonna get so far because it could be linked right back to spine. All right, so now let's just look at a few key points. These points will become much more relevant when we're looking at movement, but just a quick one going through here. So this one that's on the screen here is a thoracic vertebrae and you can tell that because it's got the ribs attached versus seeing it oh that's my alarm to remind you that if anybody needs to go to the washroom just <laughs> bio break at any time's on you we could take an official one but i'm okay to keep going so all right uh so the 
body of the vertebrae is where the weight is actually transmitted. The weight of the body building down or the force coming up. The sticky outy bits are referred to as processes. We have transverse processes, ones that move sideways, just like you talk about your transverse abdominus, the side to side. And they are where a lot of muscles attach as well as ligaments. Same thing with the spinous process, which spinous doesn't refer to the spine because you have a spine on your shoulder blade, for instance. It's about your, um, the fact that it's, again, something that sticks out for attachments. Okay, so that's all you really need to know at the moment. And that the movement, and again, we'll explore this the next time, happens at the facet joints. These little things that look like little ears on it where one sits on top of the other, kind of like little deck of cards where they slide up and off each other or they spin and rotate on each other, okay? So more on that later. Let's get to, oh, well, here's a nice one though I threw in there just for you to see the lumbar vertebrae, how it just kind of slides up and down. And just a quick note that I'll say right now, you see there it says rotation of only one to two degrees. That's because of the direction of the facets, there's no way for them to rotate. The way they stick on, um, they kind of go on like little earmuffs. <laughs> if you're talking about if I'm, my head is the bottom vertebrae and this, the top one just kind of goes, whoop, sits down and comes up and sits down. But when they're on each other, there's, there's not room for rotation. So we really need to explore the rotation in the thoracic. Okay, moving along though. We will take a moment on discs and come back to it more later. But first, before we get into discs, let's just stand up and move around for a moment, a little bit more. Okay, and we're gonna just look at all the options of our movements. So I'm gonna stop the share so that you can see me a bit more if you need that. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have our flexion and extension. So let's just do some flexion and extension. A suggestion would be to bend your knees when you flex and to extend it's typical to naturally want to extend a bit when you go. Now, this is different, just so you know. This is different than if I was doing a, a back arch where I kept my pelvis steady. So my, I'm allowing extension this way, which is different than me just going into the back space. Okay, so go ahead and let yourself basically feel like you're doing a heck of an anterior tilt. Okay, because that would still be extension. I can go all the way back there, or I could be extending here, but I do want you to let it be through to the hip joint, okay? So you've got your flexion and extension, flexion and extension. You have as well lateral flexion. Suggesting if you're just doing pure lateral flexion would be to allow that leg to go out. So I'm kind of doing like a little step touch if I'm going side to side. <laughs> and I can't help but feel my arm wanna just get involved there. So we're doing this nice little dance, lateral flexion there. Okay, and then we have rotation. I'm just gonna give you an easy rotation thing to do that again, as much as you think your students might know this, um, never hurts to do it. The old RID, of course, if those of you who are RID had a lot more rotational stuff, I still do all that, just so you know. I do it all the time. Um, I would do this before I work on arabesque, actually. Like I get my rotation going before I do an adage in the center or something. Okay, but an easy one that you can do for all ages, especially if say you're teaching adult beginners, is to imagine I've got like little sticky gecko hands or Velcro hands or something. And I'm gonna go right here. My arms are gonna stay right in line with my chest. And I'm gonna imagine there's a Velcro wall over here. And I'm gonna see, can I rotate enough to go and stick onto that Velcro wall? Then pitter patter your feet around so that you end up twisting the other way. Unstick your hands retwist. So in my case, I'm twisting to the right. It may look different to you on screen there, but so whether you, you, you can say right, you don't have to follow me. So I'm going to twist to the right stick, then twist my lower body all the way around. So now it's like I'm twisting to the left. Down stick, retwist to the right, go around. Let's do a total of three full rotations. And be honest with yourself about whether you're actually doing it in your spine or whether you'd moved your arms over. And it's pretty easy to move your arms over and go, oh shoot, didn't notice that. <laughs> now, of course, we need to go the other way. So I'm gonna go stick, pitter pattern my feet around, unstick and re-stick, boom and keep going. 
Yeah. And this one's a fun one. Kids love to do that. You could do it when you're non COVID times. It'd be fun to go to a partner and go, hello, partner. And then see if you can keep talking to your partner. Oh, and then there's another partner here that, so you'd have them all in a nice little line where they get to say like a pat -a cake dance almost <laughs> to wake up the rotation going around and pat -a cake to the next partner and see if you can stay there. Okay, so that's kind of fun. So there we go. We've just got a little bit of movement happening. Now, I wanna go back and introduce the idea of the discs in that. So we'll get more into the um, movement of the facet joints another time. But right now, let me just re-share and say, okay, a little bit about the discs and then we're gonna...